In this video I will be showing you how I made my infinity mirror. I want my glass surface to extend slightly outside the frame of the mirror. So I cut my glass a little bit bigger than the mirror itself. I measured the length of all the sides of the mirror I was working with so that I could cut appropriate sized aluminum fittings for the frame. Since I suck at cutting mirrors it broke in a strange way so the edge is curved and it's quite ugly. Luckily I will be covering all that up with a frame later. With a sharpie I made an indicator to where I should cut. I wanted the aluminum fitting to be a centimeter longer than the edge of the mirror to make sure that I have plenty of space to fit two pieces inside each other at the corners later. When all the cutting was done I drilled holes in the aluminum fittings. The holes are for bolts that will go through the aluminum fitting and an angle bracket which is placed on the inside. It will all be tightened together with a nut on the outside of the frame. Putting the frame together was actually much easier than I thought initially. The brackets made the construction sturdy and as for the look I really like the minimalistic aluminum. The nuts that are positioned on the outside of the frame will be covered up by the glass which extends outside the frame itself, which we'll get to soon. When most of the frame was in place I put the mirror inside the construction and fastened the last nuts. The mirror is held well in place and personally I love the look so far. To have something to stick the lead strips on later I inserted some wooden sticks that I cut to the right size before. As the color of wood does not really fit with the design, I took it to the basement and gave it a coat of black spray paint. While the paint was drying, I used the extra time to cut away the excess ends of the bolts we put in place earlier. This made it look more finished and more like one piece. By the time I was done, the paint had set on the wood and I could put the pieces in place. They fit pretty good from the start. But to make sure they really stuck in there and didn't move, I added some hot glue. Next thing, I drilled a hole in the aluminum and the wood so that I could access the power cables of the lead strip. After I'd pulled off the protective film on the back of the lead strip, I realized that adhesive that comes on the back of the strips was not enough to hold them in place good enough. I decided to stick it up using some masking tape and then glue the strips to the wood using hot glue. I've used hot glue before and now as usual I always make a mess. Luckily it's really easy to clean up once it has dried so I just chipped it away with my knife. For the glass on top I didn't want to attach it to the frame permanently. Maybe in the future I would like to change color of the strip or do something else with it. So I decided I would try to hold it in place using magnets. On the internet I found a batch of small neodymium magnets which was perfect for the project. I marked off where I should drill so that they would be distributed evenly along the side of the frame. I made really shallow holes in aluminum to make sure the magnets did not disappear into it. Then I took some super glue and just stuck it onto the magnet and put it into the hole. In the end they fit really well and they did not come out even though I really tried to get them out, so I think it should be very durable. I put the glass on top of the frame so that I could perfectly mark off where the magnets were. Using super glue, I glued a new set of magnets on top of the marks. And if you ever do this, make sure to get the polarity right, else you will have a frame that repels your glass. Now we have a mirror with a frame that has a detachable glass surface on top. I think it looks pretty cool and I have high hopes for the end result. Time to fix the wiring. In case I want the mirror to run on battery power or attach to another power supply later on, I soldered some connectors to the cables from the lead strip. The connectors are really common and you can get it from any hobby store. I connected the wires from the connector to the power supply and it worked amazingly. I didn't check for defects on the lead strip beforehand, so I was very happy seeing there were none. That is beautiful. Time to add the film, that really is the essence of the entire project. 
The film provides a reflecting surface on the inside, making the light seemingly bounce endlessly inwards, while also letting through a little light so that we can enjoy the effect. In the end I went for a black film, and not the one that looks like a mirror. The black one gives less depth in the reflection, but in the end I think it looks better when it is turned off. To get the best look possible, it is key to remove any bubbles or imperfections in the surface. I cut the excess edges off with a scalpel and turn it on. It's amazing. I wanted to hang it on the wall, so I needed something to hang it from. I removed the glass surface and drilled a hole in the frame. In the frame I inserted a short angled bracket that will act as a hanger. I screwed it in place and made sure it would not give in to the weight of the construction. All that really remains now is to put it up on the wall and thank you for watching. We are a brand new YouTube channel called Natural Nerd and we will definitely post more content in the future. If you liked what you saw, subscribe for more videos. We also have a Facebook page if you want to follow that. Thanks again for watching and stay creative.